Well, that's not good. Well, hello, hello. This is Solder JS, and welcome to Amateur Hour, where I do some sort of nerdy DIY tech type thing off the cuff, and you learn along with me. There will be typos, wordos, and even duos, but in the end, we'll get it all figured out, though most probably through a non optimal route. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a Sony Blu ray drive that thinks that it has a USB overvolt even though it's quite obvious that there's no USB drive plugged in. So I got a little bit eager and already started to take the thing apart and I didn't put it back together enough that the um, clips would go into place here. So I'm just gonna pull this back apart again and show you what we've got here. So that needs to Go away. Come on. Uh, there we go. Now that popped out. And uh, we want to put it back to ground here. All right. Now I've actually already removed the couple of screws and ribbon connectors for the Blu-ray drive as well. So that's coming off. And I've got the remote, which is necessary to turn it on and off. So we can see here on the screen, it says an error occurred after disconnecting all USB devices, click close. Well, there's no USB devices connected. So I click close and it goes to the home screen for a second and then goes away. Now. Because it's saying a USB error, now really this could be any type of power failure on the board. The error message could be a complete red herring, but just to see, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the close button and I'm going to disconnect the USB, which also happens to have the remote as well, and see, oh, nope, that didn't work. Uh, if I do it fast enough, I can get the um, display, there we go. So now it's actually quite happy with that disconnected, but it's going to go into sleep mode. So with that, I've isolated that the problem is in fact on this chippy do here. So we need to figure out how to turn off the USB while remove, re, uh, leaving the IR sensor intact. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. Hasn't gone into sleep mode yet, but it's not complaining about power over voltage. So the good news is whether or not the over voltage is on the USB, it definitely is on this board here. Um, let's go ahead and move this in a little more. Now, ideally what we'd like to be able to do is diagram this out. Okay, pause for just a second. I wanna explain why I didn't diagram this out and what mistakes follow. Up to this point, I've personally only worked with electronics kits. So the heavy white silk screen boxes that you see covering up traces threw me off. So even though there's not much here, not being able to clearly see and diagram what is there in this very simple circuit made it much more complicated in my mind than it was. If I'd been thinking rationally, I could have used some fine tip probes and done some point to point testing to see and confirm what connects to what. But instead, I end up destroying more traces, which, although it does end up solving my problem, was definitely one of the aforementioned non-optimal routes. Okay, continue. Uh, because there's probably, oops, there's, this is probably only a single layer board. It looks like there's nothing on the back here, which leads me to believe that there's, it's just single layer, single side. If there was uh, something on the back, then I could think, well, maybe it's more than one layer. But since there, I mean, there's only a few components on here. And since there's nothing on the back, it wouldn't make sense that for there to be another layer in between when they've got all that real estate on the other side to use. So what we wanna try to see is if we can figure out which pins go to USB. So this is the USB right there. It's got one, two, three, four pins. I don't think it has any more than that. I think this is just USB 2, not USB 3. USB 2 only has four pins. 
And my first course of action, this is maybe a little bit more drastic than it needs to be, and you can see I've already made some cuts there. My first course of action is just to take an X-Acto knife and to try to cut the traces. And before, I wasn't using an X-Acto knife, I was just using a, a pocket knife I had on hand. So I want to see if I can get out my X-Acto knife. And uh, I've got one that's for doing wonky do stuff, and I've got one that I like to keep nice, and I'm going to try to figure out which one's which. Here, okay, that's the actual X-Acto knife. So this is the one I use for wonky doos. Okay. So what I can tell is that these, these traces here go to the USB and they don't go anywhere else. So if I can manage to just cut deeply enough straight across, I should be able to sever the connection between the USB and the other thing. But it has to go deep enough to actually get through um, the copper and it has to be wide enough that the little dust particles don't cause it to connect. Now the problem here with doing it this way is that most likely all I'm doing is ruining uh, the data connection <laughs> because these are very thin as you can see here uh, and so uh, th so this is a trace and this is a trace so these are the two traces that I'm cutting through and ruining those are probably the data connections the traces that I probably need to ruin uh, are probably one and four now I I wish I had one for reference just torn apart but I, I think that where you see the larger solder blobs, that's probably going to be power. These ones with those smaller solder blobs are probably going to be data. So what we see here, that's probably the data. And then these largest ones are for mounting and then also possibly for um, ground as well. Now, the funny thing is this had worked for years and then we moved and just a few days later it stopped working. So. I don't know what to conclusion to can draw uh, conclusion to draw about that. Um, okay, so where are the data lines? It looks like this resistor here. I would imagine the ground is going to be rather large and just kind of connect anywhere. It looks like this might be data, and then this may just connect straight to ground. It's kind of hard to say. It looks like four, whoops, four here is bridged to seven. So to me, that that looks like that's probably ground. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up a spec sheet real quick about USB because I don't remember off the top of my head. So I just Googled here USB pinout. And then we've got a SparkFun Electronics. This looks like it's USB 2.0. Uh, so let's see. And indeed, it looks like the middle lines are uh, data minus, data positive, VCC. Power is that uh, first line. So if we were to reorient this the way that we're looking at that board, then I think that's correct. Uh, the, the one is power and four is ground. So let's go back to there. And what we very well may have somewhere on the board is a short to ground. Um, there is something I wanted to check. Got my handy dandy multimeter here. I wanted to check resistance. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna check resistance. Um on either side of, ooh, let's move that out of my way. On either side of this resistor here, this is a zero, um, zero ohm resistor. And I see 0.3 ohms about. So that makes sense for that. Now let's check um, by this, it looks like it might be a capacitor. Let's see, this should be overload. that again. Make sure I'm only touching right there. Hmm. Uh, 1.3 ohms. So that might be our 
our problem actually is we may have uh, a capacitor that is shorted. Let's try this one. This one measures four ohms, so I might just be measuring wrong or have something going on. Um, but in any case, I'm going to go back to the original plan and I'm going to uh, cut through what I think is going to pin one here. I'm feeling pretty good Oops. about what I did going through those data lines. That uh, Let's see if I can zoom in any more on that. But from the looks of it, I got it wide enough and deep enough that I think it destroyed the traces. So I'm just going to pluck that out a little more. And I can always fix it later if I want to by just uh, figuring out which pins these are and then soldering from these pinpoints to the correct pin over there if I wanted to fix it. But I really don't care about fixing it so much as just making it so to play um, uh, Blu-rays again. Oh no, and I'm messing up my table. That's all right. I knew that was going to happen. Just didn't know it was going to happen so soon. This is a new table. All right, putting down a mat here. All right, and then going back over. Now I'm just going to slice through here. Let's see if we can get that. Just straight across the trace. Trying to dig deep enough. Cut through it. that's good enough we shall see so I think it's either gonna be better or worse I go ahead and zoom back out here all right there's our little doodad turn this guy off probably should have just desoldered some stuff like that zero ohm resistor so there's not a path from point A to B now I did unplug the power before I'm I'm plugging it in this time, not that it much matters. Um, let's see. I'll just hold it. So if it starts smoking, we'll know that we've got a problem there. Now let's turn it on. Okay, well, it's powering on just fine. All right, we got a uh, boot screen was coming up. And let's see what she says. All right, so it's come up and we don't see any issues about the power. And uh, let's see, I don't, I don't know if the Wi-Fi is set, but let's not connected to a network. All right, I'll just take a second to, oh, actually, you know what? I think I got one that doesn't have Wi-Fi on purpose. And I have plenty of uh, Ethernet cables, so let me go grab some of that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I went down to the garage and got some Ethernet cable. Yeah. I'll get this plugged in. All right. Great, so... Let's see how it works. Oh no. All right, so that wasn't quite right. I've got a self-diagnostic code, but I wonder if the uh, DVD drive I wonder if the DVD drive needs to be plugged in even for other applications to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this in here and uh, reconnect these ribbon cables if I can. 
They don't look too difficult. They look pretty easy. Let's see, pull that back. That one obviously goes in there. That one obviously goes in here. That one obviously goes in here. Thank goodness the blue parts on this, the solid plastic part is nice and long. All right, and that should go all the way in, not halvesies. Actually, let me come back around. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed I did unplug the power there. So let's sit this back in where it's Uh, sitting as it's supposed to. And more importantly, I really don't care if Netflix works because I've got another box to do that. It's just a quick and dirty test. I'm going to go uh, grab a Blu-ray. I'll be right back again. Okay, which of these buttons was eject? Not power, probably. There we go. Put in good old Gattaca, and let's see what happens. One of the weird things about this player is that you cannot eject a Blu-ray while any application is going. Now you're not going to hear sound, but that's because I don't have it hooked up to a TV, it's just a spare monitor. Well, it looks like we're getting further than we were before. Let's see if we can skip ahead to the menu. And I can. And indeed, the movie is playing. Let's see if we can skip ahead to the next chapter. No, of course not. Skipping by chapters, piracy. All right, cool. Well, I'll have to say that that satisfies my curiosity that the Blu-ray works. Now I wanna go back to Netflix and try again, uh, just to see if the service code had something to do with the Blu-ray drive, or if it might perhaps still have to do with power. Cool, so it looks like the error code was actually um, just based on the fact that the Blu-ray wasn't plugged in. Like I said, this thing's a little funny because as long as any app is open, you cannot eject the Blu-ray. It has to be at the home screen in order to eject. So it doesn't blow my mind that it's dying, that even when some app is loading, it's still doing some sort of self-test on the Blu-ray. Thankfully, um, despite whatever problem that was having, the blue drive uh, has been restored. And so that's a wrap on that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're interested in tech stuff that is in the range between programming, soldering, dinky tech repairs, and weird nerdy technical whatnot, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and in all cases, have a great day. Bye.